on August 28th, 2014, then President Obama made the biggest mistake of his political career. According to conservatives and Fox News, President Obama walked into a White House press conference wearing a tan suit. The way these folks were talking about this tan suit, you would have sworn President Obama slaughtered, skinned, and wore a conservative baby flesh suit. I know, overreacting conservatives is such a cliche, it can't even be parodied properly anymore. But seriously, there are bigger issues we need to address. Things like outrage over a tan suit cannot possibly take up space on your to-do list when there are more productive things you could be focusing on. And I get it. When your conservative policy and politics are not popular, but you need to win elections, you distract voters with culture wars, wedge issues, and other outrage fuel. That's all they've got. Outrage fuel. I'm only semi-condemning it. Don't we all wish we had a job where you pretend to work and get paid a ton with all benefits included? It's like you're a more respectable Kardashian. Maybe. So making a thing out of a tan suit or a fancy dinner makes it seem like conservatives are doing something to help the soul of the country when in reality it's a ridiculous ploy to be a part of the news cycle for a day or two. I just mentioned a fancy dinner. Now, if you're not in California, you might be thinking to yourself, who the hell is mad about a fancy dinner? Is that the biggest scandal that is tearing your state apart? Yeah, it is. Republicans in California want to waste between 80 and 400 million taxpayer dollars on a recall election because our hot governor went to a fancy dinner. Sure, they claim it's about more than just a fancy dinner, but when all the criticism you see lobbied at the hot governor is, how about that dinner at the French Laundry? It makes it crystal clear that this whole thing is about a fancy dinner. Yes, Republicans are that petty and desperate. Today, we are gonna break down and explain everything. The fancy dinner, why I stand the hot governor, why the haters hate, and more. Starting with the most fun explanation, Article 1, hot governor? If you are friends with me on social media, you know I refer to California Governor Gavin Newsom as Governor Hotness. And it's not just because he is conventionally attractive that does play a factor, I guess. Even though there are objectively, maybe, better looking politicians, like white power bro and guy who made Mitt Romney hashtag mood for a day, Republican Senator from Missouri, Josh Hawley, yikes or House Chad and Bra, who hates the Green New Deal so much, he is personally taking out trees one by one. Republican representative from North Carolina, Madison Cawthorn. Double yikes. Side note, incels, how did you let this guy get elected? Don't worry, I can say incel, I'm one myself. You guys are supposed to vote for the guy who is gonna help you out with your skull shape and tiny wrists. Never, ever, ever, vote for the Chad. Get it together. Anyway, I'd say you're not really hot until you get confirmation from the gays. So gays, let me know. While you could argue that the hot governor is also a Chad, he is teaching y'all that good policy and politics are real panty droppers. And I don't think he's a Chad though. When he first got elected as governor, I had doubts if he was attractive or just tall. Ladies, fellas, and those who lie it's betwixt, you know what I'm talking about. We have all had romantic relationships based on nothing more than they are tall and that is hot. Then I got confirmation from two trusted sources. Good Luck America host and guy whose OnlyFans account I'm waiting for, Peter Hamby. I want you to park that big Mac truck right in this little girl. And comedian who was Kramer's girlfriend in one episode of Seinfeld, Sarah Silverman. I couldn't find the clip from Peter. Snapchat is kind of known for deleting videos after a set time. So I will do a dramatic reenactment from memory. Pretend I'm a cute blonde or ginger. It's about to be a white boy summer.
California Governor Gavin Newsom is America's handsomest chief executive. Look at that guy. I really like modeling. That was the genesis. Then confirmation came from Sarah Silverman. This clip I was able to find. There isn't enough imagination in the world for you to pretend I am super haughty Sarah. Hi Californians, it's me, your best friend Sarah Silverman. You know, our hot governor, Gavin Newsom, whose teeth I'd like to lick. I don't know about the licking teeth part, but I agree on the rest. I guess the biggest weapon anti-governor hotness folks have are the ugly dudes who parody the governor. Ew. At least when Josh Myers does it, A, he's hot, and B, those are actually funny. Devin Nunes, maybe you want to go just a little further west. Maybe walk right into the Pacific and keep going. Destiny calls, broham. Manamana. The thing though that keeps Governor Hotness likable is that he's an awkward. And I, and my mind is now going. All right, thank you. Dorky. No, that gets a little too. Uh, Goofy dad. Four children. And more importantly, the politics. That's the real reason I'm here simping. So let's get into that. Article two, why I stand. Beauty fades, but good policy lasts forever. A lot of politicians will try to go in hard and fast with their policy and politics without giving you a moment to get in the mood. Governor Hotness though, knows what we like and has been giving it to us at a good rhythmic satisfying pace for many, many years now. And he's not afraid of experimenting or bringing in tools or consulting experts on how to make things better. Oh yeah. Full disclosure, politically I'm liberal, I guess. I know actual liberal people would consider me a normie liberal, while conservative folks would Kelly Loeffler me till the cows came home. Radical liberal, 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 radical liberal. Being from California, you might assume I'm super far left liberal just because I'm a Californian, but you don't know California if that is your assumption. Have you ever been to the Central Valley? or the Inland Empire or Orange County, a county so famously Republican and racist, no one was shocked at the White Lives Matter rally that took place there a couple of weeks ago. My politics chola lean to the left, but I'm not an extremist. On both sides, there are folks who are talkers and folks who are doers. Also on both sides of the political spectrum, we the people are all about the folks who are doers. I'm about to lose my liberal cred with this next statement, but whatever. That was a big reason why I wasn't and am still not a Bernie bro. I am so sorry, kids. But a dude who has been in public service for over 40 years to be so inconsequential, it's just very sus to me. And that's not a dig at Bernie. Well, it could be, but I just wanna make my politics clear. A person like Bernie, to my eyes, has been more of a talker and not a doer. You know who has been a doer though? The hot governor. Back in 2004, after hearing then President Bush oppose same-sex marriage, guess who decided to stand with the LGBTQ community and perform same-sex marriages at San Francisco City Hall while continuing to support legislation that helps and condemn legislation that hurts the LGBTQ community. Back in 2019, Governor Hotness signed legislation that helps guarantee women's autonomy. That doesn't just mean abortion rights. That means any decision that a woman has to make about her body. She can make the decision that is best for her and her life. As someone with ovaries and a uterus, I am so glad the only people I have to listen to are medical professionals whose only interest is my health and well-being. We all know laws against women's autonomy negatively affect women of color at a higher rate. So the governor making sure women have this right makes the law equitable too. Police brutality is a very hot button issue right now. Dr. Weber introduced a bill that would change the law 
in California from using lethal force when reasonable to using lethal force when necessary. This bill was signed into law by the governor in 2019. And it might seem like a change of words will do nothing to stop police violence against the public, but it does. That simple change of words makes it so that the police can be held accountable and need to explain why lethal force was necessary. It takes away a protection that kept police from being held accountable. Whether you're on the defund the police side or not, we can all agree there needs to be police accountability. In September of 2020, the governor signed a bill that bans chokeholds in California. He also signed legislation to have oversight in police and sheriff's investigations. Plus, a bill that would make sure that law enforcement won't hire racist or prejudiced folks to become police. While there is so much more work to be done reforming the police, these legislative actions are a good start that most people on both sides of the aisle can agree with and get behind. Climate change. I'm glad we are, for the most part, in agreement that it is actually a real thing that is happening. The hot governor signed an executive order to get all cars in California to zero emissions by 2035. A good idea not just for the environment, but also so for business. The market here and internationally is demanding zero emission cars. California, the biggest purchaser of cars, taking this step is forcing American car makers to keep up with the times. Without legislation like this, we could have another situation like we did in the 1970s, where American car manufacturers fell so far behind international car makers. It's good policy every which way you slice. It. California was the first to take that big important step. The biggest problem California is criticized for is homelessness. While we can blame this problem on the source of it, that doesn't help anybody. The best solution that the state and the governor have is Project Home Key, formerly Project Room Key. At the beginning of the pandemic, Project Room Key was put into place and has gotten thousands of people off the street and into housing. With President Biden in the White House, FEMA is now covering the cost of Project Home Key. This project is turning out to be effective, and after decades of ignoring it or hoping the homeless problem gets better on its own, the hot governor took on the monumental task to see how much we can improve. And it seems to be effective enough that this home key model might be adopted nationally. In January of 2020, the hot governor signed into law Bill AB5 that would guarantee gig workers needed benefits like unemployment and disability. Then tech companies Uber and Lyft spent $200 million on Prop 22 to have voters take all those benefits and basic worker safety guarantees away. Many who supported and voted for the proposition to pass, especially gig workers, regret trusting the tech companies and not the governor who was trying to help them get rights and protections they need. Hopefully that proposition will get repealed or something. One more or else we're going to be here all week. And keep in mind, these are all just off the top of my head. And the hot governor is just starting out his third year in office. Damn, Gina. Yes, I'm that old. After the horrible 2020 wildfires in the Central Valley, the Trump administration had originally denied federal relief for the super Republican part of the state. Then Governor Hotness called Mauro Lardo. He quickly changed his decision and Californians got the relief they desperately needed. No que no tronabas, pistolita. I just enjoy how quickly Mano's estomago flopped when a real leader confronted him. We love to see it. With all this stuff I just mentioned, it seems very strange and kind of confusing as to why Governor Hotness is getting recalled. Let's get to the super stupid and petty reason why this is happening. Article 3. The Fancy Dinner. Ugh. I can't believe I'm about to defend a fancy dinner, but this is where we are. Making a big deal over a fancy dinner is very hilarious and very, very stupid. A poor brown non-privileged female is about to defend a white privileged man with a lot of power. Con una chingada, Republicans? And you know I mean business. I've been bleeding Dodger blue since the womb, and the governor is clearly a San Francisco giant fan. 
Shit just got real. To properly break down this fancy dinner, let's start off with the timeline. On November 6th, the hot governor and his badass hot wife attended an outdoor birthday party at the French Laundry. For those who are not familiar, like I wasn't, the French Laundry is a super exclusive Thomas Keller three Michelin star restaurant in Napa that you need not just a lot of money, but a miracle to get onto their waiting list to see if you can make a reservation. This is one of the dream places a lot of ututui food people save up and light Julia Child prayer candles so they can enjoy the best fancy pants meal of their lives. I don't get it, but hey, if that's your jam and you can get in, enjoy. Que Dios me los bendiga. This fancy dinner was for an old friend of the governor, Jason Kinney. What is funny to me is when the news first came out on November 13th, no one cared. When pictures and witness reports came out November 17th, still no one cared. It was a bad look, the governor apologized, and people moved on. Then on November 21st, a semi-stay-at-home order came down. Then the fancy dinner controversy that had pretty much died by that point was Lazarus back to life. In December, after a ton of folks ignored the suggestion to not celebrate Thanksgiving in large maskless groups and the ICU capacities in California were at 0%, we went into a full lockdown. More than one month after this fancy dinner happened, the folks who had been trying to recall the governor since he first got into office went out to get signatures for the recall and used the fancy dinner as a remote movable offense. The claim that still persists, the governor put a strict stay-at-home order while he went to a fancy dinner, which is extra stupid and wrong because during this time, the governor and his family had to quarantine twice. Unfortunately, they were exposed to the Rona. The first time was November 22nd for 14 days, then on December 20th for 10 days. So he had to go into an even more strict lockdown than the rest of us. While these folks were running this campaign to get signatures, peddling a lie. You're doing great, hon. The stay-at-home order was officially lifted on January 25th. With the lowest rates in the country and the highest vaccination rates, California is headed for a full reopening of everything on June 15th, with rumors that we could reopen earlier. That breakdown should be a drop the mic moment. But let's address a few more concerns. The November 6th dinner was at a point in the pandemic when most of the state was in the red or orange tier. That means most restaurants and other businesses were at least at 25% or more capacity. Napa, where this dinner happened, was in the orange tier where restaurants and other businesses were open at 50% capacity. The dinner had 12 people and was outdoors. Sounds like this dinner was adhering to the guidelines. There are some reports there were more than 12 people there, but I couldn't find any verification of that. Let's talk a little bit about the other controversy. The governor was dining with some rich lobbyists, longtime friend Jason Kinney, and medical lobbyists Dustin Cochran and Yanis Norman. The way this was reported at first made it seem like these guys paid for the governor and his wife's meals to get legislative favors. Then the governor clarified he paid for his and his wife's meals. So that dinner for favors idea is out. Kenny runs a business called Axiom Advisory where they lobby for big oil and big tech, among other folks. Now, as established, Governor Hotness took on big tech bros Uber and Lyft to give drivers benefits and more pay. So Kenny failed there. Remember when the hot governor went full Beyonce on Elon Musk? Probably not relevant here, but it was pretty sweet. When it comes to big oil, with the commitment to go zero in emissions by 2035. And as I was writing this, the governor's office just announced the end of fracking by 2024 and an end of all oil extraction by 2045. So again, either Kinney is a bad lobbyist or a super smart one who gets paid to try and fail. Respect. 
Cochrane and Norman are medical lobbyists and their biggest mission in the last couple of years has been to stop affordable medication and drugs from happening in California. Guess who, back in September of 2020, signed a bill to let California manufacture its own drugs, guaranteeing affordable prices for things like insulin and epinephrine. Again, either these guys are terrible at their jobs or the governor is not as easily corruptible as most politicians are. Some folks in the governor's inner circle want him to break ties with his longtime friend Kenny, but I think that's a lousy way to treat your friends. Unless someone benefits you financially or politically, you can't be friends with them? If it comes out that Kenny is a racist, abuser, terrible person guy, then yeah, cut ties. Until that happens, stay loyal fam. It's super hilarious to me though that the Republicans who are challenging the governor are shaming him for a fancy dinner. These people, who are millionaires. One who is a super multi-millionaire. Making it seem like they are just like us working poor. And the governor, who went to a fancy dinner once, is the out of touch coastal elite. Really? Did you guys come to that conclusion from your million dollar mansions? Eating a lot of dinners with other way more rich people? Siding with a political party whose leader lives in a country club? Really? Interesting. I understand you haters need a scandal because you have nothing else, but unless the governor accepts bribes or solicits gay hookers in a public bathroom with a white stance or that bridge thing I still don't fully understand or leaves constituents to freeze to death while he goes to warm his buns in Cancun or is an alleged sex offender, you're gonna have to do better than a fancy dinner. Article four, the pandemic response. If you have doubts at the pandemic response, you have legit concerns. Now that we are, hopefully, at the end of this pandemic, let's see how the leadership of the hot governor fared. Before we get there, let's clarify some things. A super brief history lesson on the pandemic playbook. In 2005, President Bush read about the 1918 flu pandemic and got to work making the most comprehensive pandemic plan. In 2014, after Ebola was a thing, President Obama made a more comprehensive pandemic response playbook. When the transfer of power happened in 2017, Eric's dad and his team ignored Obama's efforts to teach them the pandemic response. In 2018, Tiny Hands fired the entire pandemic response team. In January of 2020, when there were rumors about a virus that could cause a pandemic, a government scientist, Dr. Rick Bright, tried to get the head of Health and Human Services to do something about this troubling virus. They did nothing and here we are. I'll link to that 60 Minutes interview. It is shocking how this whole thing was preventable. We can coulda woulda shoulda all day but that won't help anything. The reason why I bring all of that up aside from it didn't have to be like this. Florida man not just played down the pandemic but instead of coming together as a nation to fight it he left every single state to fend for themselves. That way when something inevitably went wrong the failed steak salesman can blame someone else and divert people's frustrations and anger onto governors and other local local leaders. But make no mistake, the pandemic response was a failure from the very top. Instead of going through the entire timeline of the pandemic, let's focus on the biggest issues people have. Getting kids back to school, the vaccine rollout, rent slash food relief, and businesses getting back to work. Oh, and the budget. That one will surprise you. Getting kids back to school. There has been a lot of talk about getting kids safely back to in-person learning. People across California California were mad that teachers were holding out for safe working conditions. Weird. It's not like hundreds of teachers in places like Texas, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, and others have died of COVID because of unsafe working conditions. Oh, to make sure teachers and staff are safe, to reopen schools and keep them open, 
The state put up $6.5 billion and 10% of the state's vaccine doses for school staff and teachers. Even though it took a while and there are problems with kids and learning loss, it's a really lousy message to send that teachers and school staff's lives are expendable. Who cares about your lives? I need these kids out of my house. Again, there are problems here, but I doubt a Republican solution would go beyond cut taxes and funding for schools. They'd probably open schools fully and may the odds ever be in your favor. This way, making sure everyone is safe ensures schools are open and stay open. The vaccine rollout. As much as California and the governor got crap for the bad vaccine rollout, isn't it hard to roll out a vaccine that isn't there? After President Biden got into the White House, it was discovered that the guy who lost money running a casino didn't order enough vaccine doses for the country. He only got vaccines for his friends and allies. Guess a ching and everyone else. Pfizer even offered to make more doses for the country and cadet bone spurs refused. So again, how can there be a vaccine rollout when there isn't a vaccine to roll out? Now we are the number one vaccinator in the country with 28 million and counting doses administered. And the only thing holding us back is supply. You may see headlines saying that percentage wise, California is in the middle of the pack, but you have to keep in mind that California has a population of 22 states. When the population of your state is less than the population of Los Angeles, yeah, you're going to be ahead percentage wise. I have to mention equity too. As great as it is that people are getting vaccinated, it doesn't help a lot if the communities hit hardest by COVID aren't getting vaccinated. Part of that is hesitancy, but the bigger part is that there was no way for folks out in my neck of the woods, for example, they could get vaccinated. The governor put pressure and reserved a percent of doses for those of us less fortunate folks of color. I and a lot of people I know on this side of the tracks are fully vaccinated now. Without that push for equity, who knows if we would have gotten any doses. The vaccine rollout was gonna be a poop show no matter who was in charge. Failure at the top makes for failure at all levels. Rent moratorium and food help. Texas, everyone's favorite place to compare California to, started evicting people from their homes back in April of 2020. Texas wasn't the only state. A lot of others also started kicking people out of their homes too. Seems like not a good move to kick people out of their homes at the beginning of a global pandemic. California didn't do that. After a battle in places like Los Angeles, the governor put a moratorium on evictions until June 2021. To avoid the disaster that is coming to a lot of the country, the state and the feds will pay 80% of people's rent so they won't have massive debt when this whole situation is over. That also helps property owners pay their taxes and such, which keeps money flowing and the economy going. I doubt out, a Republican would have compassion for renters and not do what Texas and others did. I could be wrong, but I doubt it. Remember when people were in need of food and farmers were forced to throw food away? California saw this and got to work making it so farmers could give away extra food to the people who needed it. Farmers got money for that food too, helping keep money flowing through the economy. There was also an expansion of CalFresh and EBT programs to make sure people could put food on the table. There was also a program to help seniors get food. A lot of seniors who live alone got three meals a day from local restaurants. Restaurants were paid to provide food for seniors and other folks in need. Making sure people are fed and allowing restaurants to stay open, hire staff, and do some good for their communities. A win-win-win all around. I would hope Republicans would do this too. Please have a heart. Maybe not. Every single California Republican voted no on the COVID stimulus package businesses getting back to work. This might be the coastal elite liberal in me, but it's nonsensical that folks were put in a position where they had to choose between staying healthy and making money. 
Of course, the folks who suffer the most are the working poor and people of color. Yay, capitalism. The hot governor, in the middle of a pandemic, gave tax credits and breaks to small businesses and low-income families. No trickle-down economics caca here. This year, because there was a budget surplus, we'll talk about that in a minute, the state was able to offer small businesses billions of dollars in grants to help keep them afloat. Plus, the Golden State stimulus that helps poor folks by giving them between $600 to $1,200 in addition to the $1,400 from the federal government. Businesses can't do business if people don't have money to spend at those businesses. California seemed to be the only state to have this extra money to help out businesses and poor folks. I don't think other states had this, even though a lot of them never closed down businesses after they reopened. Interesting. The budget. Back last year, because of how everything was going, Governor Hotness's 2021 state budget was projected to be in a $54 billion deficit. Then, in 2021, when the budget numbers came back, the budget had a $15 billion surplus during a global pandemic, when most people lost jobs, while California paid out billions in unemployment. There was a surplus. For context, the last Republican and kindergarten cop who won the recall election back in 2003 left the state with a $91 billion deficit. While there was no global pandemic and the economy was starting to get better, Republicans seem to hate the governor because his politics and policies are proving the thesis that many of us on the left have been arguing for decades. Cutting taxes for the rich doesn't help anyone at all. Taxing the rich and giving that money to small businesses and the poor actually helps and strengthens the economy. So, a Republican had California as the eighth largest economy in the world. With a more liberal Democrat, we are now fifth. Chew on that one. Fun fact, California is 14th on the tax burden scale at 10%. With the 20th highest property taxes and the 17th highest sales tax. Taxes aren't as high as folks would have you believe. Compared to Texas, that is 35th on the tax burden scale at 8%. And Texas has higher property and sales tax than California. Plus, Texas doesn't help out or protect its citizens the way California does. And doesn't Texas produce oil? Shouldn't they be paying no taxes? Just a thought to throw out there, you know, for fun. Article 5. Personal life. Ew. I'm gonna need a Silkwood shower after this section. Governor Hotness has been married to his badass hot wife, Jennifer Sybil Newsom, since 2008. They have four adorable children together. His marriage isn't a problem. The worst thing it causes is jealousy on all sides. The problem is that the governor was married to this scary lady from 2001 to 2006. I've heard and read the argument that his judgment is bad because they were married and she burned him at the RNC last year. The hot governor handled that in the classiest way and we'll get to that. A person's personal life is literally none of my business. I will say this though, had the governor stayed married to the scary lady, then yeah, I would have my doubts about his judgment. But that marriage ended and he eventually got help for his problems with alcohol. Are those two related? Who knows? Also, who can claim they haven't been involved with or in a relationship with or even married someone they shouldn't have been with at all? Everyone makes that mistake. Remember when Charlize Theron dated Sean Penn? Or when Tom Hiddleston dated Taylor Swift? Or when Britney married Federline? Or in retrospect, when Britney dated Timberlake? No one is free of making questionable choices. If I had a nickel for every bad or trash guy I dated, and was involved with, I would not be living in East LA. I can't throw stones. We've all been there. I see it as a becoming a real adult rite of passage. On the burn, Scary Lady said this. A socialist Biden-Harris future for our country. Just take a look at California. It is a place of immense wealth. 
immeasurable innovation, an immaculate environment. And the Democrats turned it into a land of discarded heroin needles in parks, riots in streets, and blackouts in homes. And when he was asked, the governor said this. Nobody has asked this yet. I will jump on the grenade on behalf of everybody. You uh, don't have to. You don't have today. to. I'm curious uh, if you are watching the RNC and if you had a response to your ex-wife who said in prime time the other night that California is a land of discarded heroin needles in parks, riots in streets, and blackouts in homes. Um, uh, this may leave you wanting, but let me first acknowledge that I appreciate you saying landing yourself on the grenade uh, and let me just extend appreciation for your effort to get my response and I respectfully uh, defer to the next question. He did the classy thing and who needs to respond when others will do it for you? Junior girlfriend and vengeful banshee who will haunt your dreams. Kimberly Guilfoyle who screamed this message of hope. The best is yet to come! Is the loud lady gone? <laughs> I'm scared. God, I'm glad we already had our kids because I think I was too close to the TV. I might have been sterilized by that. But there are subtle digs. For making this happen. We're grateful to each and every one of you. Well done and the best still is yet to come. More work to do. And well, I'm not saying one person upgraded and the other person downgraded, but I'm gonna leave these pics on the screen and let you decide for yourself. Article six, lulls Republicans. After the tons of research I did and the timelines I broke down, my theory is that these Republicans and other haters hate the hot governor so much because they're jealous and they're scared. Folks are like, jealous? Jealous of what? Yeah, of what? It's not like the hot governor is young, hot, with a badass hot wife, a beautiful family, is respected by his colleagues, celebrities like him, real cool celebrities too. His ideas are popular and work out well. He puts his money where his mouth is and appoints minorities to positions of power in the state. And the biggest scandal about him is a fancy dinner. Yep, who would be jealous of that guy? Plus, Republicans as a whole are scared. They are becoming more and more irrelevant as the years go by. Why? Because their policies and politics are not very popular. Hence, all these culture wars they are constantly fighting. Pointless, but it sadly still works for them for now. And every time a young, respected, more liberal, popular politician that people of color, the gays, and women like comes along and runs for president, it doesn't work out so great for Republicans. For some folks, this might seem like a stretch, but this quote from one of the main recall folks, Randy Economy, kind of shows his hand. We highly doubt anyone in America will ever take Newsom seriously when it comes to being elected to any office in the future. You guys are, as the kids say, showing your nalgas. I have no idea if the hot governor will try to become the hot president one day. I am hopeful, but he's gotta do what's best for him and his family. I am ready though for 2028. I know as a liberal poor woman of color, I should be campaigning not for a powerful white guy, but seeing as collectively we are not ready as a country for a person of color and or a woman and or openly gay to reach higher office or the highest office in the land, I feel our best bet to progress is a low drama cis straight man who is dedicated to public service who you can't claim is a radical leftist socialist. Seems like a pretty good bet to move forward and continue progress with. Article 7. What are you gonna do? Republicans and other haters complain a lot about the state and the hot governor. But let me ask you, what are you gonna do to make the state better? What are your plans? How do you plan to help the homeless or schools or small businesses? All I hear are the same boring, lame talking points of lower taxes and stop the liberal menace. 
Those are just words that mean nothing. Give me a real plan that will actually benefit the people of this amazing state. Not just fulfill your power-hungry, popularity-craving egos. What are your stances on higher education? Will you keep the first two years of college in California free? On K through 12, will you do more to shrink class sizes and pay teachers more? Or healthcare, will you keep and expand covered California and Medi-Cal? What about fires? Will you keep funding state fire departments so they have the personnel and tools they need to keep us safe? What about police and prison reform? Will you hold the police accountable for their actions? Or do more to rehabilitate nonviolent prisoners and stop the school to prison pipeline? What about affordable housing or workers' rights or voting rights or protester rights? Will you stand with Latinos like the governor did or help black owned businesses like the governor did or help the Asian community and acknowledge our ugly racist past that we have to change and make up for like the governor did or the LGBTQ community provide laws and protection protections for them or us poor folks and actually provide help for housing, food, and schools? Or is it going to be Republican BS as usual to cut taxes for the rich and corporations and fool people into thinking the government should be run like a business instead of, you know, a public service? It's supposed to be a public service. That's why taxes are paid. What are you going to do? Final thoughts. I think I've done enough simping for one video, for like 10 videos actually. I sincerely hope we can put this fancy dinner behind us. It was a stupid hill to die on. What might be the most interesting point of this whole video is that since the hot governor got into office, I really began being proud of being a Californian. I was born here and have lived here all 84 years of my life. In all this time, I haven't really been proud of being from here. Most folks crap on California and LA in particular. And as a Californian, you just sit there and hang your head in shame. The hot governor comes along and I start to rethink my relationship with the state I live in. And guess what? It's freaking beautiful and wonderful and amazing. We are more than just nice beaches and in and out burger. So thanks for that, governor. I need all the California merch now though especially the sweater. Are all the things I pointed out in this video the only good things the hot governor has done? Nope. I left a lot out. Are there things I disagree with and think they could be done better? Absolutely. It's impossible to agree on everything, but I do agree with like 96% of his policy and politics. Do I have any suggestions that would benefit the side that is against the governor? It's possible. Am I going to tell you? No, not for free at least. I'll tell the governor for free and help out his campaign. I like the cut of his jib. That sounded sexual. You challengers are paying consultants a ton of money and maybe if you're lucky, they'll tell you. But if you need someone to tell you, you're really out of touch with your constituency. If you want me to tell you, it will cost you. Help get me and my family out of poverty. I have no problem selling out. Remember kids, there is no such thing as selling out. All you do is buy in. I'm ready for the trolls and haters to attack me and this video. Do your worst. I don't really care what the but fancy dinner crowd has to say anyway. You need a better thing to complain about. If you plan on harassing me in person, I may or may not be affiliated and allied with neighborhood cholos and the dope man. Something to think about. The only folks whose opinions I will take seriously are like good YouTubers. If they do a rebuttal video, then I'll take everything back. Everything. Salud, familia.